And we're back to the podcast with no name. By the way, I hope nobody's trademarked that because I don't mean that's the name of the podcast. I just mean we don't have a name for it yet. But it just occurred to me there might be a podcast with that and they're going to send me a cease and desist letter. So I just wanted to be clear about that. Welcome back, Jay. Uh, today we're going to talk about a subject near and dear to both of our hearts because it is a, I don't know how to say this in a way that isn't negative, but I, when I think about you know talking to people under 30 especially, the, they're just never going to know um, time where they had a job, where you get it, you go to college, you get a degree, you get a good job making you know forty thousand a year as entry level. You work your way up the food chain. Of course, that starts at twenty two. You don't make any really big mistakes at work, and then suddenly you know twenty nine thirty, and you're making six figures. And then if you really grind and you get the the stock options and. What not by the time you're in your 40s, you might be looking at, you know, mid six figure job. Those days are gone, really, aren't they? Yeah, they're completely gone. It's it's incredible, truly, to look at like the the legacy right now that millennials and I guess even younger than them, I think it's Gen Z or Gen Y or whatever it's called, um, you know, has to deal with because the world as we know it now is really a gig economy. You know, people come out of college, Mike. You know, two hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt, and that's just undergraduate. You know, at a decent you know university, state university school. You know, that's not even counting like an Ivy League or a private education school. I mean, it's absolutely incredible the amount of money that people pay today to go to, you know, co- uh, colleges. You know, and it's it's it makes no sense because, like you said, you know, most people come out today. They have no skills. They've been in college for four or five, some of them six years just to graduate with a four-year degree. They have massive amounts of debts that they've incurred. And now they're going into the workforce, you know, competing with people who probably have three to four to five years of experience who didn't go to college. So it's it's really, really difficult, in my opinion, and I know you share it with me, and looking at the landscape today to truly recommend that your kid goes to college. I mean, unless they're extremely focused and have a specific niche you know, and they're really, you know, determined to go down that path. It's tough to advocate college. Yeah, there and there's a lot of layers there to unpack is one is even if you go to college and you get good grades and you do all the right things and you get the STEM degree, there's no guarantee you're going to have a job. There's no guarantee that one bad email is going to get you flagged by HR and you're going to lose your job. Or there's no um, reason that what happened to you, well, I'll, I'll set up the story a little bit. This is culture wide, by the way. Like eight years ago, you were making four hundred grand or whatever, number one performer. You're paid on commission, so everything you made was you made a ten percent commission. So, if a rational person would say, "Well, why would anybody ever want to get rid of you because you make ten percent of whatever you kill?" So you bring in four million in business, you get four hundred thousand. What happened to you? I mean, man, it's a crazy story. You know, we kind of talked a little bit about it in a podcast we did a long time ago. Um, but essentially, you know, I was 40 years old and making a lot of money for the company and, um, you know, bringing in massive amounts of recurring revenue. And, you know, the three of us, my boss and another guy, we all basically were sacked. And, you know, my company that I worked for at the time, you know, a lot of people know me. I won't mention the company's name, but it's not hard to find out, um, was sold, you know, a week later. And, you know, three of the highest paid guys, you know, losing their job at the time, it's crazy to think like how much money they saved in not paying us because we were, you know, essentially tenured and, you know, high, high, very highly paid employees. So, you know, at the end of the day, the reality is, is that when you work for a corporation, it doesn't matter your title, doesn't matter your years of service, doesn't matter what you've contributed. You, again, and I've said this before, you are nothing more than an employee ID number. And, you know, those days of, you know, playing the game, as Mike said, graduating, coming out of school, working hard for eight to 10 to 12 years to try to get promoted, to become a vice president, you know, to ascend the corporate throne. Um, they're really over because there's just no loyalty among corporations. Everybody has to make, you know, a certain amount of money or a certain amount of profit in a limited amount of time. And if you don't make it, you're you're gone. It's that simple. Well, and in your case too, a lot of it was, I remember animosity. I remember we, we were at a dinner and you were telling me this is, I don't know, 10 years ago. Yep. And you said the CFO was making you write notes about what every person to order for dinner in order to expense. And at the time, I was a younger, naive intellectual guy. And the the reason is the CFO was angrier. You made more money than him. And then he just made your life a tedious and living hell, really. 
Absolutely. Until it culminated when he could get rid of us, you know, and you're right. I mean, that is literally where it is. I mean, you know, we, I think we lose track of the idea that, you know, at the end of the day, we're all humans and, you know, there's a pecking order. And if a guy has a title, you know, I'm the CFO of the company and, you know, me being just a high level sales manager, well, in his mind, he should make more money than me, even though he doesn't contribute to the bottom line of the company like I did because his title and whatever, you know, BS, you know, personality issue that he has, you know, being self-righteous and better than me, he felt, you know, that it was like his implicit mission to make sure that I was removed from the company. And you're right, Mike, it took him about two years, but he eventually got to that point. Yeah. And, and that was, again, that's why I like to do these podcasts are one of the, the weaknesses that anybody has is like been there, done that syndrome. So I'm a fully baked cynic about the world. And I think about though how naive I was when I remember where we were. We were at a place in, uh, I think it was Santa Monica on the strip. You were with, you know, some very nice friends. I was with some very nice girls at the time also. And we were, we were just hanging out. I think it was somebody's birthday dinner. And it didn't occur to me. I didn't, I was so. I like a nerd, you know, when you're a nerd, you don't understand human dynamics or how everyone is essentially never grows out of their monkey mindset, which is <laughs> different than gorilla mindset. Gorilla mindset is about living a focused life. The low consciousness monkey mindset is I'm the CFO. This guy, even though he's bringing in, you know, five, 10 million a year in revenue, I'm going to sabotage him because I found out he makes $10,000 more a year. I, I was like, I couldn't understand why this was happening. And then I remember they, they squeezed you out. And then I don't think the company did too well after they got rid of all their top earners it ended up being a self-destructive move. Yeah. And that's always the way it is. It seems like, you know, and you and I've talked about this, Mike, many times before. It's like, even when you do play the corporate game well, and you do ascend and you become a senior vice president or maybe a CEO or whatever, you realize nowadays, especially that you have a very limited time to make any kind of dent because the reality of the, the situation is you're, if, especially if you're a publicly traded company, you know, you got to perform all the time. There's no substitute. There's no exception. You could have the most incredible year ever. And then, you know, first quarter of the next year, you report a loss or you report way less than expected and they're looking to fire you. And they're literally looking to sack you. So if you play that game today, and as you and I know, there are very few people that are really ready, willing, and able to play that game or maybe even lucky enough to play that game, you have to surround yourself with your friends because that's the only way to insulate yourself because even if you know you're going to get sacked in, say, two to three years, at least you have people around you that, you know, it's likely one of those guys or gals, you know, lands another good gig, and then you're, the hope is that they'll bring you in too. And that's really the game that is being played at the corporate level of every major tr publicly traded company now. That's a long way of saying, listeners, that, there is no choice. You have to learn how to make your own job. One of the most influential books on me anyway was James Altucher's Choose Yourself. Yep. And he talked about these trends more globally. He invested in a lot of temporary service companies and he found out that a lot of these corporations, they're wiping out their entire divisions and then they're hiring temp workers because you don't have to give them benefits, insurance or anything else. There's all these advantages to it. Then you grind them to the ground, the temp workers, and then you bring in a whole new fresh batch of temp workers and people are being treated as commodities now more than ever. And that is where we're at. You have to learn how to create your own job. And to be more positive and aspirational, I guess the question would be, what skills do you need to create your own job? And I'll ask you that question. It's a great question. Um, you know, I think just to you know, summarize big picture. If you do go to college and you graduate, you know, with a four year degree, um, learn to be an effective communicator. I think that probably one of the biggest issues we have today with our younger generation, you know, millennials and even younger is they're so adept or adept at harnessing and manipulating technology and data that they lose, you know, focus on the ability to, you know, effectively communicate one-on-one -on -one and, you know, close social contact situations. And that is a huge, massively undervalued, but highly um, important skill, which is again, face-to-face -face personal communication. You know, how much can you persuade someone, you know, in close contact? You know, are you, do you make good eye contact? Do you shake hands effectively? Do you listen well? Do you respond? You know, do you read body language? I mean, all of these things are what make a person a very effective communicator. And when you're an effective communicator, you're going to also create the impression on anyone that you may be either working with or potentially being hired by 
that you you know know what's going on you know how to you know shake things up you know how to get things done you know how to persuade people convince people and and also people just feel more confident with someone who's a good communicator because they feel like that person understands that person's angle yeah one is how to win friends and influence people is never going to go out of style i noticed with the internet there's people like to you know blame millennials and blah blah blah. i've noticed boomers are not particularly effective uh, charming people that's why i don't make it a big generation thing i do know so just the way people talk to me on the internet supposed friends of mine social skills are utterly lacking the way people just the way they they talk to me i think well, well this is not an effective approach they're trying to sell me on their ideas even when they want to to get uh, not they're tro not trolling me. They're just trying to get something out of me. I'm thinking you you've just wasted my time. You're bl you're blocked. This is the most. They don't know how to do. And again, this is all generations. They don't know how to business pitch. People say, oh, I have an idea. I'm like no, no, no. You don't. Nobody cares. What you you can't design a website. You can't have a fully formed um, proposal. They social skills are utterly lacking in people. How to win friends and influence people is never going to go out of style as a book. And in terms of specific skills, you touched on uh, sales. They're, you're always selling, or, which is ironic because people, whenever you sell, for example, I have some products and books and other things I sell, people get really angry. And I think that's kind of a law of reflection at work. People are angry because they're afraid to sell and afraid to make the ask. If you learn how to sell, you have to sell yourself. You're, it, it really is a cliche, but it's true. You're always selling something. You go out. You want to meet an attractive partner. You gotta sell. You gotta sell yourself. And there, you gotta show value without being overbearing. You have to make an ask. There is a lot to it, and other sp specific skills. And again, these aren't optional. The, especially if you're under thirty, there's no. And I'm short with people a lot of times because there's nothing to debate. Th this is not an optional advice. This is you will follow this advice or you will be destroyed in the coming years with the, the market collapses and everything else. You absolutely have to learn how to sell. If you don't know how to sell, you don't know how to influence, you know how to persuade, which you should know whatever your age, you're done. It's over before it's even started. Two, you have to know how to do some kind of multimedia visual thing graphics design video editing you should i know how to edit a video not in a great way i'm not as good as the directors of the film i'm working on are but i can throw together some video clips spice it together make a video thing you have to learn multimedia because that is not going anywhere until the ai learns how to do it better than us but that's probably 10 years away i mean that that's not going to happen tomorrow in, in the future you're gonna have to learn that and the reason these are so effective is because they're cross job cross platform cross everything if you know how to create videos you can do that for a lawyer a real estate agent a doctor's office your own home business your own whatever your own youtube page your own thing and in fact a lot of youtube creators in my view they have like they put all this time in finding a personal brand in my view the biggest mistake that they make is they don't cross over they don't say, oh, I know how to do video editing and everything else. Why don't I sell these portable skills to someone else? So the, the next thing skill you have to learn is cross training. I'm not sure exactly if I were writing a book, I'd be very precise in how I word this, but you have to master crossing over. And here's what I mean. If you're a great video editor and you make really cool YouTube videos about makeup or whatever, you need to cross over into other industries and reach out to people who can't make those videos and then sell them on some kind of package. What about what do you say, Jay? To that? Yeah, I I agree one hundred percent with that. You know, I'll take even a broader stroke. You know, version is you know again, if you're twenty years old, whether you graduate from college or twenty two years old, whether you graduate from college or not, you know, there's the internet has just so much leveled the playing field. If you have a desire and you have a specificity in something, you know, something that you enjoy, something that you know gives you value and passion. And, um, and you're focused on it, you know, and you learn, you know, to the highest levels, like, you know, what it takes to either market it or sell it or position it online. There are so many ways to make money. You know, we could, you know, go down the whole Twitter, you know, universe and just look at some of the people in there. And again, I don't know, I can't fact check some of these people. I don't know how much money they make, but 
I read some really young guys and young gals, you know, that have really good brands. They've done a really good idea, a way of like defining themselves. They create stories, you know, through their work, through their social media postings that clearly, in my opinion, show, you know, ways that they've kind of leveled the playing field for themselves and put them in a unique niche where they can make money. I, I just, it's, it's hard for me to, you know, because you, you and I, Mike, we're just having this conversation. It's really hard for me right now to look at my two daughters, you know, one who's about to turn 11, one who just turned nine, and say right now where they're at in life if I really want them to go to college because unless they get to a point where they're like, you know, 14 or 15 or 16 years old and they say, Dad, I'm really highly specialized. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an attorney. I want to do this. I want to do that. I don't know how I can really recommend them to go to college because, again, it's just such a morass. You know, it's indoctrination camps for a lot of different things. It's just it's not teaching people, in my opinion, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial um, spirit. It's not teaching people how to become independent, self-supporting, self-starters. But obviously, the Internet allows that, Mike. I mean, all those things that you talk about, um, I you know, we still go back to what you and I were talking about before, which is like, you know, if you create some sort of online brand, as long as you are also supporting it with video because people don't read as much anymore. You know, when you and I created blogs, you know, five, 10 years ago, many more people were reading blogs. But it seems like today, like you said, you know, the audio video realm or that audio visual, um, you know, network or niche is a lot bigger because more people watch TV or they watch videos. So there's a lot of ways to make money. You just have to be creative and you have to choose something that you're really good at and, that you know, at a high level. Yeah, I think, and we should probably do a separate podcast on this. I think a lot about like when you have a child, you you change you change how you word things and how you explain things. And here's what I mean by that: everybody listening to this is an adult. I can throw out a few ideas. You have to trial and error and try it on your own. So if you listen to something I tell you to do and you don't like it, I don't really care. You learned a lesson in what doesn't work, and that'll bring you to what does work. When you're raising a child, you want to give them the absolute best advice. And thinking about the future, i always thinking, what am I teaching her? And I am teaching her general universal principles. So I don't just hand her things. I say, let's go find a way to figure this out, problem solving, even though she's only two. I talk to her as if she's an adult figuring something out. Oh, how do you, how do you grab this? Or here's how you kind of grab this thing. And I have her doing more advanced toys and other games at the playground than most other people, that's a general skill that everybody should learn in life is basic problem solving. For me, I everything that I've done, I, like I know how to build a website. It isn't beautiful. I don't know how to build a super duper great website. That would take me a year of just graphics, but I figured out how to build a website. I figured out how to start a podcast. I figured out how to do this. And then I hear from all these other, you know, people, especially under 30, oh, I don't know, how do I start a podcast? Like, I don't know, figure it out, bro. F figure it out. Google how to start a podcast. What do you want me to do? Hold your hand for five hours? You, if you know, you don't have the courage to take that kind of action in your life. And the best, I guess, skill to survive not only the gig economy and every economy is you have to learn how to learn about learn and how to problem solve. Right. And and you have to develop skills and you have to develop a new skill every year. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, again, I, I go back to the kind of the technology of the internet, you know, the information age now, it doesn't take much to have broadband internet access, you know, whether it's through your phone, through a tablet, through a computer, you know, there's so many like-minded people that you could network with again for free other than, you know, whatever the connection is for your broadband. Um, you just have to seek it out. I mean, you know, Mike, it's, it's funny, right? Like you think about like how when you and I were growing up when we went to college, if we wanted to do research, we literally had to go to the college library, go to the card catalog and pull out, you know, the bibliography of, you know, cards to find the books that we wanted to research to write a paper about or to do any kind of research. Whereas today, you know, everyone has access to the internet and, you know, essentially Google, Alta Vista, Bing, all of these search engines at your fingertip. And, you know, whether the information is edited or augmented or modulated now, you know, that's another question for another day. But the bottom line is you still can network with people of like mind. And when you share ideas and you collaborate, there's so many ways to figure out how to, you know, figure angles and how to make money. And really too, you know, with the internet, you can, sh all this information is free. You can find people that can help you, you know, you share with them, it's quid pro quo. And before you know it, you have a viable business. I mean, it's just, it's mind blowing. I think that a lot of people 
today are apathetic, as you said, Mike, and they just don't want to work hard. You know, so many people were brought up today, and I'm, and I'm not just speaking with younger people, it's anybody, with this idea that like, you know what, it's so easy because there's an app for that, or I can use the internet, or I can do that, that also prevents them now from like working hard. There's no shortcut for success. Success comes from mastery. Mastery comes from time in the game, and time in the game comes from consistency and a willingness to work you know, step on your dick, so to speak, make mistakes and learn from them. And it's like, that's like, to me, the general principles of life. It's like, listen, you're going to fail many more times than you succeed, but are you willing to fail enough to succeed? Well, not only that, but there, there has to be the fundamental realization. And, and by the way, it's not fair. You just have to accept it's not fair. You're either going to do really well in this world now, or you're going to do terrible. In this world. Right. That's why We've never been in more of a tale of two cities. I don't. I don't know if kids even have to read books anymore, <laughs> they right? Don't even know what tale of two cities. Yeah, is. The, the best of times and the worst of times. And if you are a self actualizer, willing to hustle, willing to learn at night, willing to make it happen, yes, you will live a life unimaginable to someone in the fifties. Because here's here's the way the world's changed. It's this is really bad for culture in general and society in general, but on the individual level is better. It's called bimodality. So you, there's going to be a lot of people just dead broke, destitute, living with their parents, hoping that their parents leave them something when their parents die. Right. And then there's going to be the internet entrepreneur who works out of a cafe. I, I worked out of cafes in Paris. There's going to be those people who have almost unlimited freedom. And if you're just in the middle, you're kind of screwed. There's not much really there for you. Yeah, there's there's no middle class anymore. I mean, I think we have to you know be very accepting of that. You know, that's a pre I mean, and be predicated on our life as that as a fact. I mean, there's you know, like you said the tale of two cities, but I mean, there's really just going to ultimately be the haves and the have nots. You know, are you willing to work hard? As Mike said, you know, put the time in at night. You know, work three, four jobs, whatever it's got to be. You know, to get food on the table, to pay for your children. Um, to pay for secondary or post, you know, post post secondary education for yourself or some other family member. I mean, it definitely takes an override, overriding desire and a strong initiative to get where you want to go. But as long as you keep putting one foot forward, you will find that. Again, I would also recommend that you do specialize in something. You choose something that you like and that you're good and that you have a passion for. I mean, you definitely have to work at it, but you know, don't just get involved in something because you read something on the internet that says you can make money. If you don't like it and you're not happy about it and you're not like driven to jump out of bed in the day and like embrace that concept, make sure that's what you're doing, not something that you just read about that tells you that it's going to make you money. And 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 yeah, there's all oh, the courses. Yeah, that's another whole other conversation. But again, I don't even like to talk about it because then people want to argue with me. I, that that is to me one of the most um, amusing sort of contradictions where they'll say, "Oh, I bought this thousand dollar course on making money online." I'm like, "Yeah, that guy he makes all of his money selling you courses. He's not." It's like a pyramid scheme, right? He, he, everybody can't sell how to make money on the internet courses. And then they want to argue with me. I'm like, oh my God. But I actually had done some stuff on the internet and it was completely outside of courses. But yeah, people want to argue with me. So I, I tend to avoid that. The big mindset shift though, and the mindset lesson I try to tell people though is just showing up and being good is not good. It's going to suck. Your life is going to suck. That that might be bad. I mean, it not might be bad. It is actually terrible to think of what happens to a culture and a society where if you're just a good person and you just do the right things, you're got nothing for you. You have to be an ultimate striver, or you're going to be falling down. So if you are a striver, great. If you're not a striver and you're not hustling every day, then the world is going to pass you by. And it's going to pass you by fast. Well, Mike, I look at it like this. Look at you and I, right? Like you and I. How many times have we told people this, that before you and I got any kind of notoriety, before we wrote our books, before you know you blew up, how long did we put in slaving, passionate time writing on the internet for free? I mean, think of crime and federalism. I mean, you wrote for, what, a decade for literally as a passion project, but what happened was 
you know, and I had the muscle couple. We were writing and we were learning our craft. We were mastering our craft. We were creating all this amazing content that we now, you know, later, 10 years, 15 years down the road, we have now repurposed it or taken bits and pieces of it and actually made money. People think that they can just like go into, you know, internet marketing or product creation or whatever with one or two years in the game and make money and, and like it's going to last. No, you got a time. You have to, like Mike said, you have to strive. You have to want to do this. I mean, the the idea that you're just going to get rich quick and you're going to start making money on the internet immediately, it's not going to happen. You have to have a realistic construct of what it takes. I mean, again, I just think back to you and me all the time that we wrote passionately for free. We created amazing content. You know, we had some people watching, you know, some people very loyal, but again, you know, very small audiences in comparison to where we are now today. But it didn't happen in three years. It didn't happen in five years. It happened after 10 years of hard stroke structured focused work and constantly showing up and that's what people have to realize you're not going to become this like you know super king internet entrepreneur mega millionaire until you're willing to put in that time of work yeah that's true uh the other side of that is there are things i wish i had known sooner yeah absolutely uh i listened to haters and losers i didn't realize that one thing i wish i had learned sooner the number one thing i wish i had learned sooner the number one lesson if you're listening and you want to make it on the interwebs uh, yes, you want to give away content. You want to write. For, the number one thing I wish I didn't sooner is I would have started charging people for something fat, like within a year. And the big mistake is that haters tell you you're shilling, you're, you're this and that. They act insulted. But those people will never buy anything for you right. ever. You could give them 10 years of stuff. I, I even get this every time in my day. Like I'll block people. Well, frequently, I block, block probably 50 people a day. They'll message me and say, oh man, I, I can't believe you, and it's because they insult me. They go, I can't believe you blocked me. I supported you. But then I look and I'm like, no, 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 you don't support me because there's an email that you could reach that anybody who's ever bought a book can email me at. So you don't, you didn't support me. But when you're new, you don't realize those negative haters, they don't want you to be able to succeed or to even have a job. So the number one thing I wish I'd have done sooner is I would have sold something i don't know what events seminars i don't know what i what i would have done specifically at the time because it's hard to go back in time and figure that out but once i did release my first the first time i charged people for anything was the book gorilla mindset and that thing was just like on fire it was a cash machine and i thought wow what if i had done this you know <laughs> a year ago right or, or or two years ago and then I started doing seminars, which do well also. And then you start to see, oh, okay, I actually have a business. And then you realize that the people who buy things from you don't complain, for the most part. That's 90%. True. And I know this specifically. I've had people who have backed me in like major ways and backed projects of mine in major ways. And I'll email them and I'll say, hey, what can I do for you? They won't even email me back. Exactly. But the guy who's never bought anything, they'll, they'll light you up all day about what you need to be doing so that would be something that I wish that I had learned sooner. And I wish too, when I was doing all that writing, I wish I'd learned web design sooner, just how to set up a domain and how to troubleshoot some basic web things and how to set up uh, some pop-ups and things like that. So th there are specific skills that I wish that I had learned years ago instead of just being one-dimensional. But I guess that goes back to the original part of what we we're talking about earlier is you have to learn a little bit about a lot. You have to know how to set up a website, pop-ups, how to create products, how to sell people to attend seminars. And you have to know pretty much everything. <laughs> Just to, everything, I agree with everything you said. It's funny though, but you have to become a master of minutia as my dad used to say to my mom, especially as an internet marketer. But you know, Mike's being hard on himself the truth is, is that both him and I were cutting our teeth at the same time. We were learning from each other. He was helping me with my site. You know, I was helping him with content. Um, you know, we were learning from other people. You know, we had awesome people reach out to us and offer us help. But he's 100% right. Um, you know, the one thing, too, I would add, maybe it's the final, final thing to say besides your wrap-up comments on this podcast, but when you create content and you're purposeful and you're knowledgeable and you're very serious about what you do, you know, your craft, that stuff is valuable in the niche that you're writing at. As long as you build, you know, a list of loyal people, as Mike said, who want to buy from you, and there's no reason that you can't start selling to them right away, 
Because once you then create that list and you're constantly creating, you know, awesome, viable products, that, that list, remarketing to those people with intelligent people who know how to, you know, create triggers and automations and all those things, man, they can literally create gold. You know, I know, what was the guy, Jeff Walker with the Blueprint book, which you and I read five years ago or whatever, you know, was like one of the first books to teach people about that. But there's no doubt that as long as you're passionate and you are knowledgeable at a high level and you create, you know, gold level content that you can make money and you can make money for a long time doing it. As Mike said, don't be afraid to charge for it right away though, especially if your content is better than what you personally believe it to be. Because I think most entrepreneurs initially are worried about their quality of their content. Yeah, they're perfectionists. And then the, the other hand, you have people charging for essentially garbage. Because I bought garbage products before. <laughs> I, cause we the, both be, have. Yeah, before before I was hip to all this stuff, I bought a guy, he wrote it. He said, yeah, I have a course to teach you how to publish a book or whatever. And I had my book written. I just didn't know how to, the the actual logistics of uploading it. And I paid 49 bucks for it. Because I'm, I'm what's known as like an angel customer. Right. If I like you, buy everything. Demon customer, they'll never buy anything, and they complain. Right. I don't like. I don't have a problem with people who never bought Grow the Mindset. No, no issue with people, but the people who have never bought anything and complain, those are truly the demon people, the demon customers that you want to get rid of. And then the people you want are angel customers. So right. I was like, oh, I bought this thing from a guy, I'd never heard of him. That was just garbage. It, and then I just learned on my own how to how to publish it. So there is a lot of scams out there. In fact, most of the internet marketing, how to get rich stuff is marketing. The only thing I do endorse is I do endorse Jeff Walker's book launch. Yep. I tell everybody, yep. whether you're a YouTube political person, a makeup girl, a fit bro, a political person, even if you're just a stay at home mom or dad or a teenager, I don't care. Everybody should read Jeff Walker's launch. It's the best treatment of the subject. And even though it's a little bit older, the principles are Still timeless. Gold. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, you know, as Mike said, there's to when you when you create awesome products, you have to learn how to market them on the internet. You definitely, if you can afford it, you know, you hire people that can help you with building a list, with creating triggers and automations. I mean, as Mike knows, there's all these different, you know, email newsletter uh, companies out there now that cost nothing. If you're under five thousand people, it's like 30, 40 bucks a month. And if you learn how to use triggers and automations, you can easily make yourself anywhere from three to five to seventy five hundred, even to ten grand a month. And just selling your product, you know, through automation by emailing people. It really is that easy. Now, again, if you have a shitty product, as Mike said, most stuff on online is shit, then it's not going to work. But if you do have a good product, and of course, there's plenty of viable stuff out there too, you can easily, easily make money. And we're not even talking about like, you know, building relationships with affiliates, finding other people of like mind who have other good products to sell your stuff and vice versa. So again, the internet is a huge, incredible medium if you use it right and you have work ethic. Yeah, and, and also too, in real life, you have to learn how to market, sell and promote. There's no there's no escaping that. Whether you wanna learn how to market or you don't, it doesn't matter, you absolutely have to learn. Whether you wanna sell or not, doesn't really, the world doesn't really care and it's getting more, uh, I, I hesitate to say it's getting crueler because what we had, at least in the Western world, was a 50 year anomaly. If we were having this conversation to people from, you know, the 1700s and they're waking up plowing their you know, potato field about to starve because, you know, they can't have enough potatoes. They would be like, what are these people going on about? You're, you're dependent on the weather and the science and everything. It's only we had a, a period of time that was completely unnatural. And that was the post World War II economy. The everything was coming out from World War II. And it lasted uh, about 40 years, maybe 50 years. But that's not natural war. We're approaching a, and by the way, those of you who are listening and new to me and haven't learned how to think, when I say something is natural, that doesn't mean I'm saying it's good. It's the naturalistic fallacy. The reality is that nature is a natural aristocracy, and you're either going to rise above it and allow yourself through hard work and strategy and skills building to reach the top, or you're going to be at the bottom, but your parents telling you about the good old days are going to give you bad advice. Don't listen to them on any of this because people never update their their software. Oh, I'm a boomer. Had a good. All I did was went to college, applied to a job, and oh, I worked the summers and paid for my whole college. Why can't you kids afford to buy houses? They have no idea what is going on because they haven't updated 
their program and their script based on what's happening in the world. So we are moving towards a more natural state of being. And again, that doesn't mean good. You're either going to be at the top or you're going to be at the bottom. There is no going to be any middle. And the room at the top, there's always room at the top, but you have to be on it all the time. Yeah, how hard are you willing to work? I mean, Mike's right. I mean, you know, don't listen to older people. They have an OS that is totally corrupt. You know, I remember Mike saying, and I know it's not a political, um, you know, commentary, but I remember Mike saying, like, if you were willing, you know, this is before Donald Trump got elected in 2016, but if you were willing to put your life on, you know, Hillary Clinton and that platform, and again, no judgment of any of that, but on that platform, then you have a corrupt operating system. And then, you know, what he said was borne out to be 100% true. And he was one of the only people in any form of the media that thought, you know, Donald Trump was going to win. And I also saw, saw it too. You know, I, I, there was a movement, you know, towards the end, the last four or five months. And it was obvious that he was galvanizing crowds in middle America. But the bottom line is, is that you do have to constantly update your programming, your OS, you know, your consciousness, all the things that you need to be successful in today's world, because it is a fast moving world. Technology shifts literally at light speed. And if you cannot adapt as technology shifts and, you know, upgrade your operating system, and that may mean, may mean like, you know, at 30, you have a completely different career than you did at 40, right, Mike? I mean, it's, you really do have to be able to adapt and flow as technology change and the world shifts. And we have never been in a, in a period where things don't happen at a faster uh, rate of speed. Yeah, there, there is no, there is no, how do you say this, set path. That's another reason too, when people ask me about their, their life purpose, I think, what, where are you people getting this from? You know, I, that's what I wonder a, a lot of times where people ask me these questions. Like, Self-help books. Yeah, like who, who's telling you you have a life purpose? There is no life purpose. It isn't uniform. You're, you're going to have pivots and different pathways and ups and downs. And there, there is no singular purpose. I don't know if that's a thing people talk about. Their life coach told them that. Yeah, or something. But these are younger people that are too young. They can't afford a life coach. <laughs> I don't even know. It's just one of those really bizarre questions. And that's another thing you have to, another uh, trend you better get used to is the biggest mistake people make is they think, well, I'm X and therefore I'm going to do X. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your job is. Your job's going away. They're all going away. Right. Mine's going to go away. Computers will be able to do robots. They have them in China now, actually. AI news robots. So no matter what you do, the AI is coming, and that'll be a different trend, and we don't know what that's going to look like. But, but that's all coming. So the idea that you're going to have a fixed career path or a fixed life purpose, get over it. You're not going to. No, it's impossible. The reality is you have to be completely adaptable and amenable on the fly. You have to be willing to shift and to change and to you know completely change course at the drop of a hat. I mean, that is literally the way the world's going. So learn as much as you can, you know, diversify your, your knowledge base, um, you know, learn new skills. I would say at least once a year, you know, attempt to learn, you know, maybe not a different language. I mean, you could, but just different skill sets, you know, relevant to what you're currently doing. So if you're an internet marketer, an entrepreneur, um, you know, you're in that hustle, learn other skills, you know, learn other ways to make money online than what you're currently doing. I mean, they're just, you have to be able to adapt. I mean, it's that simple. All right, my friends. Thank you everybody for listening. This is Mike and Jay. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you.